Uh, you got a problem you'd like to work? Uh, uh, bank statement would be great. Okay. Anybody, anybody see anyone on a, doing a bank statement that they'd like to do? We did 622 with the other group. How about, I think, yeah, we did 622. We did 623. Let's do 622, huh? Exercise 622, maybe? Sound good? It's a, it's a pretty straightforward uh, bank reconciliation, entries, reporting cash type thing. Okay? So you want to do that one? And, uh, yeah, so on page 313, that's where we're at. Give that one a try. Okay? So exercise 2014 bank statement and general ledger account for cash is summarized below. We got a bank statement and then we got a T account. T account represents what? General ledger account, right guys? <laughs> okay, if I was going to do a bank reconciliation, what do I want to do? This isn't a financial statement, right? This is just a little schedule I do to figure out what the balance should be in cash. So I can make the adjusting journal entry adjusting cash from where it is to where it should be on the balance sheet. That's it, okay? So what do you think? I start with what on this? I want to reconcile between your cash balance. Balance. Okay. Balance. My cash balance is my balance per what? Books. Right? That's in my general ledger. Balance per general ledger, right? Balance per books, however you want to say it. Okay? What my balance is in, in my records. Okay? And then balance per what I'm going to reconcile to? Bank. Bank. What does the bank think it is? And that's it, guys. It's really pretty simple. And then what we're going to do is we are going to add and subtract things from those two balances to get down to an adjusted balance. Adjusted balance. And what we want is these two adjusted balances to be the same number, and then we know we're done. That's it. Okay? And what we're going to do then is, uh, is make a journal entry to adjust my books from where it is. So that's going to be this number. To where we want it to be, that's going to be this number. So if you see a problem that says do a bank reconciliation, I think I'd set that up, huh? It doesn't have to be exactly in that form. There are different ways to do it. You can make it all one. Go from the, the bank down to the books. One continuous one is fine. It doesn't matter. Okay? So anyway, um, so what do we know from this problem? Did you know the bank, 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 bank. Yeah, there's the ending bank statement balance. How much is it? 6060. 6060. That's it. Well, that's tough so far. Probably getting points. Okay? That's that's the final. Now what? Can we find out what our and the what we have record of? What do we have? Okay, so you know the beginning balance, you know the deposits, they're obviously debits, that's the money that we put in. And then there uh, are the checks written, that's cash disbursements, that's the money we took out of the account, right? That's the credit. They don't have the ending balance, what do you need to do? Maybe draw one and just do it. Yeah. So add the two debits together at sixty five hundred and eighteen one and subtract the credit of nineteen thousand. What do you get? How much was it? Five thousand six hundred. So what we are going to do is we are going to explain the difference between the fifty six hundred here and the six thousand sixty over here. That's it. Okay? That's all we're doing. Everybody agree? By the way, you need to be doing this for your personal checking accounts too every month. That'll keep you from having a bank overdraft, making a mistake and having a bank overdraft. It's simple. Nothing to it. Everybody does this. That well, see if that have any sense. Okay? You avoid having bank overdrafts and fees and all that stuff. Okay? Screwing up your credit and all that stuff. Okay? All right. So um, now what do we do? We're looking for things that what? That the bank knows about that we don't know about, and we're going to put them in here. Everybody agree with that? Things the bank knows about that we don't know about, we're going to adjust our books for. Things that we know about that the bank doesn't know about, where are we going to put those? Over here. That's it. Okay? So, you know, the bank statement's there first. Want to do that first? Doesn't matter. Go down the bank statement and see what's on the bank statement. What happens here? They have deposits. Well, the bank knows about those, and so do we, right? We recorded deposits. There's the check clearing the bank, right? It comes out of the bank. We, we both know about a bunch of those. We might not know about all of them. Gee, this one's really easy. There's only one other thing. What is it? Service. Bank service charges. Okay? Now, the bank knows about that, but we don't. So what should we do? We haven't recorded it yet. They took it out of the bank balance. We haven't taken it out yet. What do we do? Take it out. Take it out. Take it out. Service charge. How much was it? Um, $40. Okay. All right, this one's really easy. 
The last one at least had an NSF check on it. What if it listed an NSF check? What would you do? Take it out too, right? What does that mean? Non-sufficient funds? We deposited the bank, right? The bank put it in our account. We, we debited our general ledger account. And then it goes to the bank that it was drawn on, right? Whoever wrote us the check. And they bounce it, right? Because there's not funds in there. You know, it's a bounce check. And then what happens? They send it back to our bank with fees attached, right? And our bank takes it out of our account and charges another fee typically. It gets real expensive real fast. Everybody gets annoyed, okay? The person who wrote the check gets annoyed. The person who got the check gets annoyed. The banks get annoyed. Well, the banks get a little annoyed, right? Okay? All right, not much. So what we do with that, we take it out, wouldn't we? By the way, everything we put on this side has to be a journal entry, doesn't it? This is what I have in the books. This is what I'm going to want it to be when I'm done. I'm going to make a journal entry. Okay, for the service charge, what would you, you're going to credit cash there, right? 40 coming out of cash. What do you want to do? Service charge. Service charge expense if you want. You can call it that. Or you can call it what? Miscellaneous, miscellaneous expense. Most companies probably miscellaneous expense because it's a little tiny number. Okay? But service charge expense is just fine. Bank charge expense. Got it? Nothing to do this. What if it was an NSF check we were checking out of that? Still be credit cash, but what would you debit? Revenue? No, no, this, is, this one's not interest. This is a customer paid us. We put their, their money in the bank. We debited cash and credit accounts receivable, and now the check bounced. And they took the money out of the bank account. So what would you do? You would credit cash and debit what? I'm going to ask them to pay me again, right? Accounts receivable. I would debit accounts receivable, wouldn't I? Now, if I collected a note, if they showed a credit memo there, right? Let's say I collected uh, a $500 note and $50 of interest, so I got $550. What would I do? I'd add that up here, wouldn't I? Add the $550, and I'd, then I'd debit cash in my journal entry for $550, and credit what? It was a $500 note and $50 of interest. What would you credit? Notes receivable for $500, and interest revenue for $50. You would, wouldn't you? You guys get so you can just do this in your head? The answer is yes. It's scary, isn't it? This isn't so hard. If you understand what happened, you can do the entries, can't you? Okay, anyway, so there could be other things there, right? Could we make some errors and, and fix those? If you weren't here for the review session, watch the little video on doing the bank reconciliation in the review session. Who, who, who was here? We did a really complex one, more complex one. But it's the same idea, same thing, okay? So it, what's going on is everything over here on this side is what? Stuff the bank knew about that we didn't know about. That's it. And I think there's just that one. I don't see anything else there. Do you guys? If you look at the next page, they have some explanations of things. Okay. But, okay. So then what do we want? What do we want on the uh, balance for bank side? You go over here. What things do, does the bank typically not know about that we know about? Yeah, we might have sent a deposit to the bank that didn't get in the, in the bank's books yet, right? They didn't record it yet. How would that happen? I delivered to the bank after 3 o'clock. They quit posting at 3, right? It's, yeah. it's true. And almost always, your last deposit, you'll take it in at 5 in the afternoon if you take it there, right? Or you'll mail it. You mail it, it doesn't even get there that day at all. Got the idea? Okay, so what would it be? Add the deposits in transit? Now, we're not going to suggest to the bank that they're wrong because they're not. They just don't know about that one yet, right? We do, they don't. We put it in our books, they haven't put it in yet. So we might have a deposit in transit, we might not. What else might you, <coughs> might you have, typically would have? Outstanding, outstanding checks. checks. And we deduct the outstanding checks, right? What's the deal? I wrote checks at the end of the year, and I put them in the mail. In a large company, it might be 100,000 checks. How many of them get to the bank if they put them in the mail at the close of business on the last day of the year? None of them. They're all outstanding. Got the idea? In a small business, be a few checks. Got the idea? Or maybe you have none, right? You could have none, okay? But usually you'll have some. On your personal account, you probably won't have very many deposits in transit, and you probably won't have very many outstanding checks unless you're writing a lot of checks for some reason, right? I wrote one the other day. I have trouble remembering. I wrote a $50 check for my brother, and, you know, it's because I just can't remember where to put things on so I don't write checks, right? Everything's wired back and forth with the transit. Okay, so, and I deduct that. Okay, so how would we find out what those are? What does it say on the next page? It says, a comparison of checks written as checks that have cleared and the bank shows an outstanding check of 2,400. And then a deposit of 1,900 <coughs> in transit at the end of June. 
Now, this is a little harder on this part. They show outstanding checks of 2,400. I, I want to ask you something. How many checks? How many checks cleared the bank? How many checks cleared the bank? Sixteen thousand six hundred. That's the bank statement, right? How many checks did we write? Nineteen thousand. What's the difference between that? Twenty-four hundred. So they say outstanding checks were 2,400. What they could have said is there were no outstanding checks at the beginning of the period, couldn't they? And we could have calculated that. That makes sense? Because if more cleared the bank than, or less cleared the bank than we wrote, what does it mean? We increased our outstanding checks. What though, let's change it a little bit. What if we had $1,000 outstanding, whoops, $1,000, yeah, checks outstanding at the end of last year? Right? Or last month, whatever it was last month. Okay? So what if we had a thousand outstanding? Wouldn't that be that the first checks that come into the bank statement clearing would be those thousand? Ah, so you might have to do a problem like that. Does that make sense? If I had a thousand, okay, let's do this. Last month, one thousand dollars outstanding checks, okay? Then clearing the bank. This is not what this problem was. I'm changing it a little bit, right? There were none outstanding last time. I know that. There's only 2,400 outstanding now. They told us how many were outstanding. How many cleared the bank? How many checks cleared the bank you got? What's the amount? You don't know how to read the bank statement, right? What is it? Yeah, we're using the same problem. I'm just changing the number a little bit. So one six six oh oh. Sixteen thousand six. Absolutely. Okay. How many did we write? What's in our general ledger? Nineteen thousand. Checks. 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 What's the outstanding checks this month? The end of this month. This is tougher. If there's been zero, as in this case, in the problem, in the actual problem, the zero at the beginning, and the 166 cleared the bank and we wrote 19,000, wouldn't you just take the difference and say it's 2,400? It is, right? What would you do if it was 1,000 outstanding from last time? The first 1,000 that cleared the bank is probably those. What do you bet? The first thousand that cleared the bank are the ones that were outstanding last time. So then you'd only have 15 six clear from this month, wouldn't you? And you wrote 19. So how many would be outstanding if this was the case? Not 2,400. What would it be? 3,400. Could you do that for me? I think I have a problem that does something like that. Ah, and I can do the same thing with deposits and transit. There's a deposit and transit last month. What's the first deposit that clears this month? That one. Got the idea? Okay, so you can calculate that. That might make it a little harder, make it more fun on the quizzes. So let's go back to the problem the way it is, though. And what do we do? What did it say the outstanding checks were? Thank you very much. It was easy, right? 2,400. Okay, deposits and transit are going to be a little tougher. You're going to have to actually do that one. On deposits and transit, how many deposits cleared the bank? 16,2. It's right there. Everybody looking at this? You see it, right? It's easy. Okay? How many did uh, we deposit, we think? 18-1. 18-1. And the difference between that is what? 1,900? <coughs> okay, does that mean 1,900 is in transit? Well, you got to be careful. Just like the example I just showed you, right, on, on the uh, check, what does it say? A deposit of 1,900 was in transit at the end of June. Okay, so here we go. Let's do this one. So if I have a deposit in transit last month, how much was it? <coughs> oh, that's at the end of June. They made that one easy, too. Yeah. Ah, jeez. This is a horrible problem. 
to you. They just gave it to you, didn't they? 1900 How many How many deposits did we make? 18-1. And what cleared? 16-2. 1900 That's too easy. I'll show you an example. I'll make up an example. This is too easy. I'm not going to give you one that's easy on a quiz or test or final. I promise. This is way too easy. 6,060 plus 1,900 less 2,400 is how much? What's the adjusted balance gain? 5,560. What's 5,600 less 40? 5,560. Wouldn't you love to have a problem like that? Yeah. Sorry about that. Not doing that. Okay, anyway, that's ridiculous. But what, what do we want to make a journal entry for? How much is our journal going to be? It's going to be a real tough one. Just that. That's it, right, guys? Do not make entries for the books on the or for the bank, okay? Don't do that. That's the biggest mistake people make. Okay? So what's the journal entry going to be for that? Never yeah, what? <coughs> Miscellaneous expense. We'll just write it here in the middle. 40 bucks. Credit what? <coughs> Cash. You got the idea, though? How this thing works. Okay, let's let's do that example. Let's let's do this. Let's say that last month they had a deposit in transit of uh, eight hundred dollars. Okay, let's say I said that. Use the same information in the problem and tell me what deposit in transit is this month. Use the information in the problem. This month, deposit in transit. How much is that? Say I asked you that question. Could you do it? We know what's on the bank statement for deposits. We know what's on the books for the deposits. Okay? And we know the last month's deposit and transfer. Okay? Try it. Let's see what you guys, I can tell you it's just disappointing you didn't do that quiz today. It just took all your energy out of it. <coughs> No, it'd be the so first one to clear, though. It'd be the first one to hit the bank. Yeah. Okay. So part of the part of that deposits on the bank is going to be that 800, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what's that going to do to your to this month's deposit and transfer? Less. less or more? You might make it more. Let's try. It. Okay. Let's see. What do we have? The, the ones that the ones on the books, right? Deposits on the books. How much is that on our books? How much do we think we deposited? Eighteen one. How much one? Eight. Eighteen one. How much got to the bank? Sixteen two. So how much more got to the to the books than to the bank? Nineteen hundred. That was the nineteen hundred, right? But then what else happened? That 800 is part of what got to the bank, huh? So what do we have? 19 plus 8? 2,700. Let's think about this. Another way to look at it. Of these deposits going into the bank, 800 were from last month. What's 16,2 less 800? 15,400, right guys? Is that right? What's 15,4 away from the 18,1 we have on our books? 2,700. Okay? Makes it a little bit harder than that might be over. Okay? How do I know I'm where the 16 2 came from? Oh, uh, on the bank statement, it shows 16,200 deposits. We just read it from the bank statement. And the one for the books is the 18 one that they show in the general ledger. And you'll always have a bank statement, you'll always have your general ledger, right? So you just reconcile. Okay? Looking for, what are you looking for? Things that you didn't know about that the bank knew about. Right? Those will be on the bank statement. Service charges, NSF check. By the way, could somebody have deposited a note? Right? We collect the bank collected a note for us to be interest revenue and, and uh, uh, reducing their note receivable. Right? Let's say I collected uh, an $800 note with $500 in interest. What will I need to do to my cash account? Debit it for $850, right? And then credit what? Interest revenue for the 500, right? And credit 
No receivable for whatever I said it was. Okay. Got the idea? It's easy, isn't it? Okay. By the way, could I pay bills straight out of my, my tax account? Sure. So I could have the bank pay bills for me? What would I need to do? They know about it, I don't. So my bank statement? Credit cash and debit, whatever it is. Whatever expense account it gets sent. I got it. So whatever I pay. This is simple. Okay. Let yourself look at it, think about it, work a couple of these. There are some harder ones in the problems. Okay. The exercises are quick, but that one's way too easy. Okay, let's do one. I don't know why it happens out of order, but I do. Um, and we'll do the set well. Let's do exercise six four. Um, but we'll do the journaling system. Let's do the same one. Let's do 624. That's the one I did with the other class. That was a good one. Let's do 624. Okay. It's got credit card sales in it. It's got sales discounts, sales returns. By the way, sales discounts and sales returns and allowances are what kind of accounts, gang? They're sales accounts, except they are returns and discounts, so they're contra, right? Opposite of the normal. Contra revenue. How do you increase them if they're contra revenue? With a debit, right? Put too much in, reduce it with a credit. Okay, just the opposite of revenues. Absolutely. So let's try this problem. Okay, on November 30th, they sold two items of merchandise for 450 on a Visa card, and there's a two percent credit card fee. So I want to make sure we got that. Okay, what what's the deal here? We got a sale. How much is it? 450. What do you want to record for sales revenue? How about 450. Okay. I don't care how they paid me. You can just do sales if you want at this point. I know you guys know sales is revenue by now, right? Okay. Hope they're surviving to figure that out. A lot of companies just call it sales instead of sales revenue. Okay. All right. What do we want to debit? What did we get? We might have gotten cash if what? If the credit card company puts the money directly into our cash account. The credit card company is our bank, right? A bank. And they put the money directly into our account. Okay, that's possible. If you're a big company, that could be happening. So it could be debit cash for the amount of cash you get. How much cash are you going to get? They're charging a 2% discount, guys, for using the credit card. Here's the deal. The bank is taking the risk of not getting paid instead of you. Right? And you get your money sooner. Right? You don't have to wait to get paid. So the bank's also waiting to get paid. So they're charging you a fee. And then they're going to charge interest to the credit card customer. Right? Okay, so they get both. They get a fee from you and they get the interest on the credit card, assuming the person doesn't pay on that. By the way, there's nothing wrong with you guys using credit cards. Always pay it before you have to incur any interest. Always pay that full balance. And then credit cards are wonderful things. Credit cards are horrible things if you don't pay it off every month. Because the interest rates are really high, right? And it's ridiculous how much you have to pay in interest. So don't finance things that way. If you want to finance something, go to a bank and borrow some money at a low interest rate, right? Or borrow from the grandparents for no interest. I think. Well, maybe not, but anyway, yeah. Okay, because they have to pay interest, of course. What's the deal? Debit cash, uh, 441. Yeah. Or 2% of 450s Nine bucks. You've got a $9 discount. Credit card discount. Yeah, we call it a credit card discount or credit card discount, which is a what kind of an account, really? Expense. You could call it credit card fee expense, credit card discount expense. A lot of people won't put the word expense on it, but is it still an expense? What about credit card expense? You can call it credit card expense. Okay. Yeah. Is it still an expense even if you don't use the word expense? Yes. So please put the word expense on it so I know you know it is. Got it? Okay. All right, good. What if, the, though, it's going to be a situation where instead they don't give me the cash, but I'm, I'm a small company? So I don't have an agreement with the bank to automatically deposit to my account. What happens is they pay me, you know, a week later or something, and they'll write me a check. The account's receivable. Exactly right. <coughs> Good job. That's exactly it. Of course, if they're going to pay me later, it's an account receivable. And who's the account receivable from? How about the credit card company? Right? Duh. Right? That's it, isn't it? Big deal. You can do this, can't you? Okay? Just relax. Look what it says and record it. Okay, then on the 25th, we sold 14 items of merchandise. 
Your customer seen an invoice price of 2,802 terms, 2% 10 net 30. What does 2% 10 mean? If they, if they pay within 10 days, they get a 2% discount. If they pay after 10 days, they have 30 days to pay then, so they'll, they'll wait 30 days then, of course, right? And then they get no discount, right? Why would I offer this discount? Because I want people to pay me sooner because I have fewer bad debts if they pay me sooner. Make sense? But that's a huge discount. There's probably another reason. My competitors are offering the discounts, right? And if I don't, I'll lose customers to them. So if the industry has these discounts, we typically do it, right? You just charge more for your product and have a discount. So what happens, right? They have to survive, okay, in the industry. Um, what's the interest rate on a 2% 10 at 30? How many days do they wait to pay? And pay early. How many days do they pay early? Ten. Not ten. They pay in ten days instead of thirty. So it's twenty days. Early. It's two percent for twenty days. How many twenty-day periods in a three hundred sixty-five day year? Thirty-six and a half. Ten. I'm sorry. How many ten-day periods? It's one 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 percent per period. Should have said that. Or you could say it's eighteen and a quarter, right? Twenty-day period. Well, let's see. Two percent. And a quarter times. Which interest is that? 36.5% a year. Or if you think it's 1% for 10 days, which it is, right? 2% for 20 days is 1% for 10 days. It'd be 36 and a half, right? Times 1%. 36.5% percent interest. How many of you are willing to pay 36.5% percent interest? Of course not. What do we really want here? We want to pay rapidly, right? And we also want additional sales because our competitors might be getting Nowadays, it's more like 1% net net 30 because interest rates have gone way down over the years. Okay, so that means interest better under control, I guess. Okay, so what would we record though at the time of the sale? How much? Yeah, they're using what's called the growth method, so they don't take the discount out. There's also a net method. We'll worry about it in the coming few lessons if you take it. Credit what? Sales. Sales revenue. Fantastic. That's at the date of the sale. We don't know whether or not they're taking a discount to it. Okay, then what? The next one says, so 12 identical items of merchandise for 7,200, terms 2% 10, net 30. What do you want to do with that? Get a little redundant. Same thing, isn't it? Now, what's going to determine how you're going to record the cash receipt? It depends on when. They're going to pay you a different amount based on when they pay, right? They get the discount if it's less than 10 days. Everybody good? Okay. And they don't if it's more than that, or 10 days or less. All right. And then it says on the 30th, customer D, which is the last one, right? So from the 28th, they returned something. It was defective, and they got a credit, one of them. So that it said there were 12 that cost 7,200. What's that each? 600. Okay. So they returned $600 of product. What would you do? $600 sales price. Do they, do they owe me 600 less if they return it? They returned it. They're not going to pay me 7,200 anymore. What are they going to pay me? 6,600, right? If you give them an account, if you give them credit on account, do you still yeah. pay that out? Oh, yeah. They owe you less, don't they? Because it didn't do that on one of the problems on, in, the, on in here. That's why I had a question about it. Oh, well, I hope they did. We'll have to look at it. But I hope they did. They owed me 7,200. Do they still owe me 7,200 if they return 600 of it? No, they only owe me 6,600. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. So wouldn't you credit accounts receivable? Yep. It's either a mistake or you misread the problem. Okay. Something. Something. Yeah. Okay. They might have made a mistake. Both do that happen. Okay. Credit accounts receivable 600. Devil what, everybody? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sales, returns, and allowances. What kind of account is that thing? Contra revenue. Contra revenue. So CR revenue would be 7,200 on the sale, less than 600. We, we took the revenue down. But we don't debit revenue typically. Why not? We want to know how many sales returns we have. That makes sense? And how many allowances we have. A sales return is the product of return. Allowances, it's damaged and you just have to throw it away. That makes sense? And then it'd be an allowance instead. Yeah. When, when could be, uh, I mean, when could be, I'm not in the way. Like could you debit sales revenue? Yeah, some companies do that. They just reverse the sale instead. Yeah, but it's not it's not as good because you don't know how much it costs you to put all these returns. 
Remember, you're paying freight to get it to him, freight back, damaged it maybe, and you have to put it back in your inventory and manual, right? So you don't want to be shipping people the wrong thing or damaged things that happen to come back. You want to ship them what they ordered and have it in good shape. It makes sense. So it's a cost to do business. So we kind of like to track what the sales returns allowances on. Okay? That's so all. What do you do with the sales allowance? Well, what, what happens is on my income statement, but good question, I'm going, to, I'm going to add up these revenues, right? Yeah. And that's going to be my gross revenue in sales. And then I'm going to subtract sales returns and allowances and sales discounts to get my net sales, right? That's what it's for. So just a little more information, right? That's all. Okay, good. So that's return. Now, when they pay me, they're going to pay me based on the 6600 right, guys? <coughs> Everybody agree with that? I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give them a discount on stuff they return. That makes sense? Okay. All right. So then the next thing that happens is they got paid in full from customer D. Now we got to ask ourselves, is that within 10 days? Yeah, yeah it was. The 28th, they're even paying early. That's not, they, nobody does that. Yeah, I think. Well, maybe not. 28th to 31st is three days and six is nine days. Okay. So anyways, they paid us the balance in full. How much do they owe us, everybody? 6,600 they owe us. What kind of a discount are we going to give them? 2%. How much is that? $132. So how much are they going to pay me? The difference. 6,600 less 132 is 6,468. So just record it. What did I get, everybody? They paid me. Cash. How much did they pay me? We just calculated it. 6,468. Great. How much receivable did they pay off? The whole 6,600. Be sure and take it all out, right? Because they're paying it off. They satisfied it, right? And then there's another 132 debit I need. What is that? Sales discounts. This is too easy to believe. So you see what you see on the income statement now? I'd have all those sales added up, less the sales returns and allowances, less the sales discounts, even my net sales, right? So I have gross sales and net sales, all right? Might be, it's bothering these young women that this, this gentleman is sleeping here, but I'll tell you what. Really early in my career, some guy that I started teaching when I did, he complained because people sleep in class. And I'd say, hey, look. It, he says it's disrespectful. And I said, you know, that's like, you know, texting in class or talking to your friends or something. You know, watching a football game or the basketball game or what. You know. What's more insulting? Coming to class and falling asleep or not coming at all? Probably not coming at all, don't you think? Yeah. And besides, you know, it's possible when you're sleeping, everybody you could hear what the person's saying, and you might learn more than if you were nervous listening. <laughs> Maybe we should all come in and sleep and I just talk, right? Yeah. Besides, I've told you this before, haven't I? I have the capacity to sleep with my eyes open. Which I know a lot of you guys are doing right now in class, you do that all the time, right? Your mind goes dead and you're just sleeping with your eyes open. I I got one on you though. I can sleep and lecture at the same time. And usually you can tell I am because I'm so disorganized and disoriented that I don't know what I'm talking about, right? So, yeah, anyway. So, that woke him up. We were just making fun of you a little. It's all right. Have a nice nap? Yeah. Yeah. But actually, you know what? You can have a little 30 second nap like that, or well, 10 minutes, whatever it was. Okay. <laughs> And you're still refreshed, huh? You're ready to go. It's all right. Hey, it's okay. Yeah. I take a nap once in a while at work. I try not to, but sometimes I do. Okay, good. So let's do some more. All right, we got that one. Then it says what? On the last one, customer receipt paid back invoice from November 25th. Okay? It's now December 30th. Good grief. These guys took a month and five days. Dead beats. Okay, anyway, they're late, aren't they? But anyway, we're not going to charge them a fee for being late. But what do they have to pay? Full amount. Okay, how much was it? 2800 was it? Okay, debit what? Cash, 2800 Everybody good? And credit what? Accounts receivable. And we are brilliant people who got it all right. Okay? Okay, good. Let's do something else. Do a short one on... Uh, Went too fast. Well, I probably put nothing, but I meant to put something. Uh, accounts receivable? Debit cash, credit accounts receivable? Is that right? Can't believe you asked me that. 
right. So let's see. Let's do. Um, let's record an allowance. Uh, let, let's record recording, reporting, and evaluating a bad debt estimate. Let's do ex exercise 618 real quick. Let's try that one. Let's see you do Okay. We all do sort of the same thing. In 2014, we're on page 212. Bob Ceramic Shop has a sales revenue of 60. Sales. 60. What else? What's going to go with the sales on the income statement? Bad debt. Bad debt expense. Excellent. And then it says, of which 25,000 was on credit. Only 25,000 on credit. The rest was what, guys? Cash. You think you're going to have any bad debts on the cash sales? Nah. You're going to have bad, you're going to have bad debts on the credit sales, right? Cash sales, unless it was counterfeit or a bad check or something, is right collected. It's got the cash. Okay. Uh, let's see. At the start of 2014, they had receivables of 3,500 debit. What account goes with accounts receivable? Was it 3,500? 3,500? What account goes on the balance sheet with that that relates to bad debts? Lots of doubtful accounts. You guys know this, don't you? You guys are getting so you can learn things really fast. You're getting it organized. You're fitting it all in the knowledge that you already have, aren't you? That's the way to go with this. Are you going to forget the stuff we did in the first of the course? Of course not. We're using it over and over and over, right? It's just the same thing. Just have it all fit together, okay? And if you don't know some of the stuff that's still fuzzy from the beginning of the course, what do you need to do to survive here? Get it. Get it. Get it. Okay? Okay. Get it down. Go back and look at it. Okay. Um, it showed a 300 credit. That's in the beginning of the year, is it? That's where we were. What's bad debt expense going to be at the beginning of the period? Zero. Zero, probably. We haven't made an entry yet. And it didn't say anything about it, I don't think, so it's probably zero, isn't it? Collections on accounts receivable, right? Totaled how much? 2000 And during 2014, amounted to 18000 So what's the journal entry for that? Debit cash, 18000 You guys agree with that? And credit what? Cash receivable. Just write down everything I know. I don't even know what they asked yet, but I bet they're going to use it. Okay? And that's the other side of the cash, of course. Okay? So we're good. Then what does it ask? On December 31st, an account receivable of 550 from prior year was deemed uncollectible, therefore it was written off immediately as a bad debt. What's the journal entry for writing off bad debts? I'm giving up on a receivable, aren't I? You guys agree with that? So what do I do if I give up on one of these receivables here? <coughs> Credit it. How much was it? <laughs> How much? Five fifty. What do you want to debit? I'm giving up. I don't have bad debt expense now, right? I do that when I replenish the account, right? This is just a write-off. When I write off, what am I doing? I'm taking it out of receivables. That's going to be this one. It's going to be five fifty coming out of here, right? And debit allowance for doubtful accounts because I am giving up. I'm finding some of these. Well, I found more than there was at the beginning, huh? Okay? But I got a debit balance in the allowance now, don't I? Okay, great. That's where I'm at. Okay, we got it out. Got it done. Okay. On December 31st, 2014, on the basis of experience, a decision was made to continue the accounting policy of facing estimated bad debt loss on 2% of credit sales for the year. Credit sales. How much is that? Twenty-five thousand, right? What's two percent of twenty-five thousand, everybody? Five hundred bucks. What do I want to be five hundred dollars? It's based on sales. What is it? Bad debt expense. I want this to be five hundred, so I'm going to debit it for five hundred. Everybody agree? So here's replenish the account. Debit bad debt expense for five hundred, and credit what for five hundred? The allowance for doubtful account. Excellent. Last for doubtful accounts gets 500 added to it, right? And bad debt expense gets the 500 added to it. So, what's my ending balance in, in sales? 60. What's my ending balance in bad debt expense? 500. What's my ending balance in accounts receivable? I don't have a clue because I don't know what sales were. It'd be debit accounts receivable credit sales. So, I don't know that one, do I? What's my ending balance though in the allowance? Looks like 250, and I bet they asked me for that. Okay? So what kind of things did they want to know? Give the required entries for the two items. We just did them, didn't we? Debit allowance for doubtful accounts, and credit accounts receivable, and debit bad debt expense, and credit allowance. We already got them. Not even reading the question, we <coughs> the question must be. 
Okay. Show how the amounts related to accounts receivable and bad debt expense report on the income statement and balance sheet. What would we do on the balance sheet? We'd show accounts receivable. I don't know the amount because they didn't give it to me. I'd show less the allowance for doubtful accounts. How much is that going to be? Two fifty. And the difference between the two, I'm going to call what? Net accounts receivable, net realized accounts, realizable accounts receivable. What I'm going to show in the income statement, I'll show both the sales of sixty thousand and the bad debt expense of of 500. Where are you going to put the bad debt expense? Down under operating expenses. Yes, sir. Uh, so for the account receivable sales, why is it different from the credit sales? So you don't know that. Oh, I guess it is. We, I, uh, I apologize. You can put the 25 in here with debit accounts receivable credit sales. For 25 of this, the rest will go to cash. I guess I did know. I lied to you. So 3,500 less 18,550, what's that? Thank you. You're right. I didn't miss it. That is what they intended, isn't it? What's that, that difference? 28,500 less 18,550? 9,950? Does that sound right? Something like that. And this would be 9,700. So, excellent. Good. You're right. Absolutely. Thank you. Good catch. Okay. And, uh, what else do they want to know? Oh, is the 2% reasonable? Well, I don't know. They had accounts receivable last year of 3,500, and they had an allowance of 300, and then they wrote off 550. Wasn't enough, was it? Now their receivables are all the way up, I think, to 9,950 with that debit right in here, right? I think that's what it is. But it's almost 10,000, isn't it? Do you think the 250 is enough? I don't. They need much more. So how would you fix it? Let's say you think your allowance should be a thousand. Debit what? Bad debt expense for another 500. Credit allowance for another 500. Well, what's 750? And you get there. I have to put another 750 into each of them. See you guys. So study a bit, right? And then do the quiz. And then make sure you're really up to speed on uh, inventory. And we're on our way. Be sure to make a quiz, okay? <laughs> that give you your 20 points. <laughs> or close there, too, right? Or close there, too. <laughs> Use your integrity. It's important. It really is. So these are nice exercises in how much integrity you have, right? It's tough. That's tough. The book's right there. Your friend's right there. I don't know how to do it, but I passed it in wrong. What's that? Well, your friend, yeah, it might not be helpful to you. <laughs> There you go. How do you